China is the world's second largest economy. Along with a history of rapid growth, has come one of the most developed transport networks in the world. It has the world's largest highway network, carrying 80 million tons of freight every day. It has the world's largest high-speed rail network that connects hundreds of cities, as well as a huge air and transport system with 227 airports. Seven out of 10 of the world's largest ports are on China's coasts. This huge transport system is the backbone of the Chinese economy. But progress never sleeps. The network continues to develop night and day, quantitatively and qualitatively, meeting the challenge of getting people and goods around the nation. The Dugga County in Sichuan province is home to the world's largest printing house of Tibetan scriptures. They have 320,000 printing blocks accumulated over the last three centuries. The printing house reproduces 70% of the world's Tibetan classics, covering Tibetan medicine, history, and culture, which are delivered to all parts of China. Today, Master Dugar is dispatching a number of these classics to Kangding. Dukka is nearly 600 kilometers from Kangding, a 24-hour ride. The biggest obstacle en route is the Chola Mountains that rise to 6,168 meters above sea level. For centuries, it has been a major barrier between the Tibetan region and the rest of China. The narrow dirt road that connects this part of North Sichuan to Tibet was built over 60 years ago. It snowed over for all but two months of the year. A breakdown can cause a traffic jam, which lasts for days. It is notorious to drivers as the most dangerous road in China. <laughs> This struggle will soon be over. For five years, a huge project has been underway beneath the mountains. The Tola Mountain Tunnel will be the world's longest and highest road tunnel. The 呃，像平原隧道的话，正常的话一个隧道大概在两百人次就可以干下来，但是我们这个隧道的话，我们已经达到两千六百人次了。The harsh environment puts every worker under huge pressure. The project is entering the final stage. The tunnel will be finished in a month's time.
Thanks to the efforts of thousands over the past five years, it will then take just 10 minutes to cross the mountains and to do so in safety while sheltered from the weather. Today, Huang Qijin is going to be the first non-engineer to drive through the tunnel. His car is equipped with a 360-degree laser radar, continuous image capturing camera, and a positioning data acquisition system. This allows him to collect road information in real time as he drives along. Huang Qingjin also has to cope with altitude sickness as he drives through the world's longest high-altitude tunnel. In under 20 minutes, all the mapping information from the tunnel has been collected. Huang Qijin will continue mapping along the highways, collecting data that has never been recorded before. Two thousand seven hundred kilometers away in Beijing, Huang's data from the Chola Mountains has been received. An hour later, an electronic map outlines the new road. When it opens to traffic, this new map will be sent to every mobile phone user through the internet in less than a second. China has the planet's largest highway network. Over 200 million vehicles carry 15 billion passengers and 33.6 billion tons of cargo a year. And the network is still expanding. Other bold projects like the Chola Mountain Tunnel will open to traffic. China's highways now extend to every corner of the country. For Lu Shujie, the highways are key to his family's livelihood. Yunnan's Huanning County has a uniquely mild climate that allows it to produce the earliest citrus harvest in China. However, the fruit only remains in peak condition for a week. Before the highways opened, the fruit could only be sold in surrounding cities within a few hundred kilometers from Huaining. Now with the National Highways Network, Lu Shujie is able to travel across the country in a couple of days, taking the fresh flavors of Yunnan to north and northeast China. Lu's son-in-law is his co-driver. Using satellite positioning can pick the quickest route to his destination.
以前你像我们跑西南这边，这路不好走，拉水果经常跌坏。现在这高速修通以后，路好走了，运输时间大大缩短。To deliver his cargo of fresh fruit to Beijing, 2,700 kilometers away, and sell it at good prices, Lu Shujie has to drive overnight. The highways at night are rarely quiet. Many items, be they fresh fruit and vegetables or courier packages, need to reach the city before it wakes up in the morning. Every 24 hours, more than 20 million trucks, like Luz, run across this huge highway network, day and night. They carry almost 85 million tons of cargo, which accounts for nearly 80% of China's total freight volume. The network now spreads to 4.69 million kilometers. Of that, 130,000 kilometers are freeway, the longest in the world. China's highway network has become a huge engine to promote its social development. But you can find that too many vehicles running empty on the road, eating away the advantages of highway transportation. About 40% of the trucks in China run unloaded, which pushes up the cost of freight transportation and leads to a huge waste of energy. The city of Chengdu is an important transport hub in southwest China. In the north of the city, one smallish gas station can claim to be the most profitable gas station in China. It serves over 2,000 trucks every day. It takes over 300 tons of fuel oil to meet the daily demand. The building on the other side of the wall is why trucks gather here. The freight market opens at 8 in the morning. The trading hall of Chengdu Logistics Port is packed with more than a thousand truck drivers speaking a multitude of different dialects. People used to find it very hard to find the best deal. Today, the situation is already changing. More and more people just start with a search on their mobile phones. New technology is revolutionizing the way the transport system works. This the technology has swiftly shown its appeal to drivers. When a truck enters the gate of the highway harbor, the vehicle's information will be sent to the back office system. The system automatically matches requirements and details of the trucks with the orders for delivery. Thus, goods are matched to suitably qualified trucks and their drivers, meaning that each day over 2,000 trucks no longer run empty back out of the logistics center. Today, more and more digital highway ports are being built across China. The highway network's efficiency is being continuously optimized through the use of big data technology. In the future, every delivery will be more efficient with decreasing energy consumption per unit delivered. However, while highway transportation has great advantages, it also has some inherent disadvantages.
Zhejiang is an inland city in western China with a modest population of about 3 million. One of its main claims to fame is that it produces diesel locomotives for 24 countries around the world. For a city so far from the sea, it is a significant challenge to be able to deliver its locomotives to customers who may well be on the opposite side of the globe. Two hundred kilometers away, in Yibin City, the Jinsha and Minjiang rivers converge into the Yangtze River. As the longest river in China, the Yangtze has been a key communications corridor for thousands of years. The Great River leads all the way, deep from inland China to the Pacific Ocean. That the cost of water transportation is one fifteenth of that of highway transportation is an advantage, and for extremely heavy goods, water transport is irreplaceable. A first batch of nine locomotives made for Argentina has been assembled. They will travel downriver to the port of Shanghai, 2,800 kilometers away. Then, in a couple of weeks' time, they will be transferred to a seagoing freighter and taken across the Pacific. It is hoped that these first nine locomotives will lead to the opening up of new markets in the Americas. Highway transportation of these locomotives is very expensive and poses many problems with height and weight limits. With water transportation, these problems dissolve away. The locomotives from Zuyang arrive at port. Workers hurry to hoist them onto the freighter. After a busy night, all nine locomotives have been safely stowed. The advantages of water transportation for large cargoes are very obvious, if not subject to the limitations of geography. The arid west of China has an abundance of coal. In 2016, China's coal production reached 3.36 billion tons, which accounts for more than half of the national energy supply. But most of this energy is needed in the east, thousands of kilometers from where it is mined. To get it there is the most intricate of Chinese puzzles. The 594-kilometer Shuohuang Railway is one of the busiest in China. Every day, 226 trains run along it in pairs. It is like a man-made canal, a main artery for China's energy transport. Shenzhou in Shanxi province is the starting point of this artery of coal. Stocks from western China gather here before being transported to east along this iron canal. Two hundred sixteen wagons are marshaled into a three kilometer long train. The twenty thousand ton dead weight load requires two nine thousand six hundred KW electric locomotives to get it moving. Then comes the really tricky bit. The railway east of Shenzhou drops an elevation of more than 1,500 meters. The heavily loaded wagons travel downhill through tunnels and bends. The huge momentum they acquire poses a major threat to the safety of train. If the 216 wagons fail to brake correctly and in sequence on a bend in the track, the consequences will be catastrophic. The secret to solving the problem lies here. 
Every day, Chiu Jun, director of technology, checks the 4G transmitter stations along the Shuohuang Railway. It's a world first in the application of this technology to heavy haul trains. The two locomotives are 1.5 kilometers apart from each other, but they have to be precisely controlled to ensure their synchronization. A tenth of a second lag could cause a major accident. In order to ensure full 4G coverage, there are 260 transmitters along the length of the line, sending a continuous stream of data 24-7. This advanced signaling technology is the key to ensuring the safe operation of these super-long coal trains. It allows synchronized control over the two electric locomotives set 1.5 kilometers apart. All in a day's work, a great performance to ensure there is no drama. Face recognition technology is one of China's leading edge developments. Based on image recognition and big data, it can quickly lock on to target persons being searched for. Engineers in the monitoring hall of the Guiyang Public Security Bureau are commissioning a new face recognition and monitoring system. Eight hundred kilometers away, Cao Tao boards a train from Guangzhou to Guiyang. He need to get to Guiyang this afternoon to direct a crucial part of the commissioning work. Cao Tao's company develops and provides facial recognition systems. This year, it decided to move its headquarters to Guiyang due to the rapid development of communications in Guizhou province. Guizhou is the only province in China that is entirely mountainous. While this makes for a spectacular environment, the province has been equally notorious for its poor communications, which have seriously impeded economic development. Guangzhou is the capital of China's powerhouse manufacturing province, Guangdong. In the past, it would take took 22 hours to get to Guiyang by train. Now the journey time is just four and a half hours, thanks to a new high-speed line connecting the two cities. Cao Tao makes it for his appointment in Guiyang. Every city in China now presses for its own connection to the national high-speed rail network. Besides the convenience, the economic and development opportunities this brings makes a compelling argument. As of 2017, China has 22,000 kilometers of high-speed rail lines in full operation, 60% of world total. It has cut travel times between the great conurbations from days to hours and given rise to a flourishing economic circle around each. Five days downriver from Ibin and the Argentina-bound Locos have arrived at the Three Gorges Dam. Beginning in 1994, a huge investment and 12 years of work saw the building of the world's largest dam completed. Besides being designed to control flooding downstream and to aid consistent navigation, the hydroelectric plant now generates nearly 100 terawatt hours of electricity, supplying nine provinces and two cities. The dam has raised the water level in the upper Yangtze by 113 meters, which has submerged many dangerous shoals and shallows, 
allowing larger vessels to make passage there. The traffic on the river at the dam is now 10 times what was planned for. The world's third longest river is now the world's busiest inland waterway. The huge upgrade in capacity poses a major challenge. It's no easy job for Guo Yan to coordinate so many ships through the dam. She must rely on the set of five huge ship locks that she manages. This is the world's largest inland ship lock, 1,607 meters long, divided into five chambers. With the capacity to take a maximum size vessel of 10,000 tons, up to 12 3,000 ton cargo ships can transit the dam in each direction at the same time. With the huge fall of 113 meters, transit time is four to five hours and longer when there is a backlog of vessels. The waiting time can be problematic for pleasure boats and emergency vessels that need to go through the dam quickly. To deal with this, the Chinese engineers have built the world's largest ship lift. It can handle vessels of up to 3,000 tons and take them through 113 meter fall in 10 minutes. To achieve this speed, the Chinese engineers decided to use a climbing of gear rack system. Aided by gravity, the huge rack rolls up and down, lifting and dropping cargo in the 200-meter-long super elevator. The use of the gravity counterweights greatly reduces energy consumption. The ship lift, along with the two sets of locks, one for upstream, one for down, have greatly increased the transport capacity on the river. The Yangtze River tightly connects the 11 provinces it passes through and forms a key economic corridor across the country. The Argentina-bound locomotives pass through the three gorges. They'll continue on downriver for another 10 days before reaching the Yangtze Delta where they can be loaded onto an ocean-going freighter for their final destination. For those that don't want to spend days on the water, air is the answer. Beijing Capital International Airport is the second busiest airport around the world. In 2016, it saw a throughput of close to 95 million passengers. Flight delays have become endemic, with around 400 flights each day having to be postponed. The solution is even greater capacity. In the south of Beijing, thousands of construction workers are tackling the flight delay problem. They are building a whole new super airport to serve the city.
the huge steel starfish-like structure means that passengers will never have to go more than 600 meters to reach their boarding gate. The large central hall without columns is designed to maximize the public space. The innovative design brings its own challenges for the builders. Liu Yunfei climbs 20 stories to the roof every day. He is totally familiar with this huge structure. However, the purpose of the building is not to outdo Beijing's Olympic Stadium. To meet the demands of 70 million passengers per year, the design of the new airport must take into account many other factors. The roof composed of 12,300 spherical nodes and over 60,000 bars is designed to have a natural curving appearance. Each junction between the beams and their connecting spheres is supported by a series of three-dimensional locking points. As the steel roof frames are completed, attention turns to more of the internal core support points. It will take eight workers to maneuver this 15-ton curved tube into place. It is one of the final piece in the 60,000 piece puzzle. On the other side of the terminal building, the construction of the four runways carries on apace. The new airport is intended to handle 620,000 flights per year. This will put huge stress on the runway's surfaces and what lies underneath. The engineers have developed a new system for compacting the subsoil. The novelty lies less in the method of compacting than in the tracking and calculation of the ground covered and that which remains. Beijing, the super city, is awaiting the completion of its new airport. It is expected to start handling traffic in 2019. The time pressure is on. China has the world's second largest air transport market, and it is one that's still growing at a rate of 10% per year. There are 3,000 civil aircraft flying in China, and this number is expected to grow. To meet the demand, China is seeking to build some of its own passenger aircraft. The C919 is undergoing testing in Pudong, Shanghai. Built to the latest international standards, it will be China's independently developed large passenger aircraft and will have an important role in the country's future aviation market. 
The first successful flight test was three months ago. But there are still years of strict testing in accordance with international airworthiness standards. Saijun has 11 years experience in civil aviation and is the C919 leading test pilot. Today, Taijun is working with the engineers on simulating emergency situation that might occur in flight. The computer program simulates an aerial close encounter while the aircraft is banking. Taijun must make a quick evasive maneuver and steer the aircraft to safety. There will be hundreds of tests done on this simulator. But for Taijun, the real work is done in the air. To complete the airborne tests, the first requirement is an aircraft spec for the job. Yang Chunxia, from the Flight Test Center's Test Engineering Department, is installing the complex test sensors in another C919. The bare cabin is totally given over to the test equipment. Anjuan Thousands of sensors have been designed and carefully installed on the plane. They will give the engineers immediate data throughout the flight. To complete all the airworthiness tests, they need to modify at least six C919s like this. In all the aircraft, we'll make nearly 3,000 test flights. The fuel consumption of large passenger aircraft manufactured by China is expected to reduce by 15 percent. Given its advantages, China has received orders for over 700 C919s. The C919 can be expected to provide a strong alternative for the future global aviation market. After a two-week voyage, the freighter carrying the Argentina-bound locomotives has reached Shanghai. One of the many ports on China's east coast, the Shanghai port, with a throughput of 37 million containers, is the biggest. Northwest of the existing port, a new wharf is being run through its operational paces. In a month's time, the wharf will see its first ship. 
it will then become the largest fully automated wharf as recorded anywhere in the world. Wang Yan and his team have been preparing for four years for this important moment. Before that, they still have two important tests to carry out. As the commissioning date is approaching, Wang Yan's team must make another round of tests to make sure the Ghost Wharf is ready for action. Everything is controlled by computers. They will automatically operate and work with each other to move the containers. 130 automatic guided vehicles, or AGVs for short, will move the containers around the wharf. They have to avoid not just collisions, but even the slightest scratch. To test the reliability of the control system, the engineers have arranged a special test for the AGVs. They are programmed to drive in straight lines and round bends within very narrow tolerances. The AGVs must control their direction in accordance with the driving conditions to turn smoothly. With that dealt with, another key is in the offing. The 130 AGVs are electric powered to minimize emissions and noise pollution. But to ensure the round-the-clock operation of these vehicles that weigh many tons, the reliability of their power supply is essential. The staff in the battery replacement station are carefully observing the process of automatic battery replacement on an AGV. This is the only AGV automatic battery replacement station in Asia. It takes just six minutes to replace the battery. By the end of the year, Yangshan Port's automated wharf will usher in the world's super freighters, and Shanghai Port's container throughput will touch 10% of the entire world total. Glass curtain walls are being installed in Beijing's new airport. The main building is about to be completed. Forty meters below the height of the new roof, the construction of another super traffic system has also entered a critical stage. The engineers are carrying out surveying work before laying the tracks for a railway system composed of five lines and 16 platforms. It is equivalent to the central station of a large city. It will also house the world's first high-speed railway station beneath an airport terminal. It allows passengers to transfer freely, quickly, and conveniently among multiple transport systems. But there is a problem in this ingenious plan. Uh, 
多分钟吧，你就到三点四十五吧，好吧？好。我们现在看到这个橙色的呢，是我们航站楼的这个工程特有的隔阵之作。我们整个航站楼在正负零以下，这一个楼层是设了一个隔阵层。整个呢，我们设有一千一百五十二套隔阵之作。这航站楼下边设有五条轨道，其中最西侧是一条高铁，它会以时速三百公里的速度过站不停车。它在运行的过程中会有一个高频的震动，对于我上部结构是有一定影响的。The problem is to be solved by shock insulation technology. 它里面呢就是一层天然橡胶，一层钢板这样叠加的。橡胶呢是有这个延展性，我的钢板呢是让它有承载力。这样的话，我既能保证我的承重的要求，又有一定的变形能力。呃，我们设计的变形量可以达到六百六十毫米。1,152 shock insulators will quietly support the huge terminal building. Multiple means of transportation are neatly integrated to give play to their respective advantages. From point-to-point -point road traffic, to water transportation for large cargoes, from high-speed rail to the aviation of the future. New technology is allowing each means of transport to be cleaner, more efficient, and handle ever greater demands for their use. China is truly being transported into a whole new era. From clothing to high-speed rail trains, from chips to Beidou satellites, in this era of technology, manufacturing is becoming more and more challenging. We will take a look at production lines that has never been visited before to see a transformation China is experiencing. Please join us for the third season of China's Mega Projects.